Hello everyone, Blink here. In this installment of the Psychology Applied to League series, I'm gonna explain the concept of mental representations, what they are, and how expert performers develop them, and why they are so important in League of Legends. Mental representations are mental structures that correspond to an object, an idea, or a collection of information, concrete or abstract, that the brain is thinking about. A simple example is a visual image. If I mention the Mona Lisa, for instance, many people will immediately see an image of their painting in their minds. That image is their mental representation of the Mona Lisa. Mental representations allow us to plan and visualize a process before actually doing it, which will help us when performing it. The thing all mental representations have in common is that they make it possible to process large amounts of information quickly despite the limitations of the short-term memory. In a study conducted by Anders Ericsson, he hired an undergraduate student from the Carnegie Mellon University, Stephen Falloon, to see if with the right practice someone could remember a lot more than seven digits in his short-term memory. This was in 1977. At that time, it was well established that as average people could only retain up to seven unrelated items in their short-term memory. The test was simple. Ericsson will read a random string of digits, one per second, and Steve will have to recite them back in the same order. In the first few sessions, Steve's performance was dead average. He could recall up to seven digits, sometimes eight. It seemed that he reached his short-term memory ceiling. But after a few more sessions, something remarkable happened. Steve was increasing the amount of digits he could recall, going up to 10 and sometimes 11. When Ericsson asked Steven how he was retaining more digits in his short-term memory, he explained that he was encoding 3 to 4 digits in groups and associating them to running times. You see, Steve was on a cross-country team, and he was used to remembering numbers with a running time format. And also, he had a lot of world records in his long-term memory, so he realized that he could remember more digits if he grouped them together like running times. He managed to retain up to 22 digits using this strategy. Every time Steve will hit a plateau, he will add a new strategy, that is, a new mental representation, to be able to retain more information. For example, after he couldn't retain more running times, he started grouping digit groups into years. For example, 1945, he would associate that with the end of the Second World War. After two years of deliberate practice, always pushing at the edges of Steve's ability and developing new memory strategies whenever he hit a wall, Steve torched his old record. At his peak, he could remember 82 digits. 82. If you think about that for a moment, that is, he was able to hear 82 random digits, one per second, and recall all of them back in the same order. But this doesn't just limit to remembering digits. For example, when soccer players and non-soccer players watch a clip of a soccer game, the soccer players are much better at remembering where all the players in the field were and predicting what would happen next. Or when expert surgeons have to perform surgery, they have developed mental representations that they use in the planning of the surgery, in performing it, and in monitoring its progress so that they can detect when something is wrong and adapt accordingly. What sets expert performers apart from everyone else is the quality and quantity of their mental representations. Through years of practice, they've developed highly complex and sophisticated representations of the various situations that they are likely to encounter in their fields. These representations allow them to make faster, more accurate decisions and respond more quickly and effectively in a given situation. A fact about mental representations is that they are very domain-specific. That is, that they only apply to the skill for which they were developed. They notice, for instance, that Steve Falloon's mental representations for remembering strings of digits did nothing to improve his memory for strings of letters. In fact, they've noticed that his short-term memory didn't improve at all past the first few sessions. He was only adding new mental representations on top of the previous ones. Okay, all of this is amazing, Blink, but how do we apply mental representations to League of Legends? Take for example a teamfight that is just about to unfold. 
If you go into it directly without planning anything ahead and just reacting, the teamfight will most likely be a mess. But if you plan ahead in your mind how the teamfight will unfold, you can prepare yourself for certain possible events. By preparing ahead of time for the teamfight, you're creating mental representations in your mind of certain events that might or might not happen. For example, preparing to flash a Thrax hook or expecting a flash ultimate from the enemy Malzahar and having your QSS ready. These mental representations will allow you to act much quicker when these situations happen than if you didn't expect them to happen at all. The best way to develop these mental representations is to engage in deliberate practice. This will put you outside of your comfort zone, which will expose your weaknesses. And using feedback from your recent practice sessions, you can define what it is that you are failing at and develop a way to overcome that, just like Steve Falloon did with his shorter memory plateaus. Alright guys, that's all I've got for today's video. Drop me a like if you found this helpful, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.